Fresh Service is an IT service management tool that's actually simple to use. It provides all the capabilities you need to run your IT efficiently without bogging you down with unnecessary bloated features. Let's see how it works. This is what the end user portal looks like. You can customize it with your company logo, brand colors, or even go for a complete design overhaul using CSS. When a user faces an issue, they can open the portal and search for knowledge-based solutions. Let's say the user decides to give the knowledge base a miss and goes for a new ticket instead. Fresh Service suggests relevant articles based on the ticket's subject line. This drives self-service and deflects a lot of the trivial queries so your team can focus on the more pressing issues. You can customize this form to get more context, like, say, their physical location. Users can even attach screenshots and other files from their local drive or from Dropbox or Box. If users need a new service, they can check the service catalog to see what they're eligible for. Since this particular user works in design, he can see all the tools a designer might need. You can bundle related services together to make it even easier to scan. The user can see the chargeback cost and knows when he can expect it. And with the click of a button, the request is raised. Fresh Service automatically sends an approval request to his reporting manager and assigns an agent for the job. We'll talk about automation in a bit. First, let's see what the agent interface looks like. The dashboard provides a bird's eye view of the entire service desk. It tells you how many tickets are open, overdue, and so forth. Right below it is the live feed that shows what's currently going on at the service desk. It basically tells you how well the service desk is performing. At a glance, we know how easy it is for users to request for services. Let's look at the agent side. The service catalog is almost as easy to configure as it is to use. Let's use the same example of Adobe Creative Cloud. These components are added by default. We'll bundle them together to make it easier for users to add a new service item. Enter the name and other details and upload the Creative Cloud logo. Now this is how you'll add any service item. For bundled service items, go over to Additional Items and add the other applications one by one. Since this will mainly be used by the design team, We'll restrict the availability to that group. Hit Save and Publish. That's all there is. The Creative Cloud is added and any designer who needs it can request for it. Now let's automate the approval process for it. We'll go back to the Admin Console and go over to Workflow Automator. This rule for service requests is added by default. You could just modify this or add one on your own. For now, let's just look at this workflow. Here, you get three types of widgets. An event is what triggers the workflow. A condition defines a set of parameters that need to be validated. An action defines what happens when the specified condition is met. Let's say we need manager approvals only for service requests that cost over $100. We can just drag over a condition to modify this rule. We're just scratching the surface here. You can automate a ton of other processes using the workflow automator. Now let's look at incident management, or IT support, as most people call it. Users can raise IT issues using a number of ways, like the portal we saw earlier, or by emailing your service desk, or using apps like Slack, Workplace, or FreshChat, which is our own chat app. Here's the list of tickets. You can update multiple tickets from right here. I'll just assign these three tickets to myself, but you can even go to bulk actions and access all these options, including sending a bulk reply. By the way, you can use canned responses to save yourself and your team a ton of time. For instance, if there's a known issue, you can thank the requester for reporting it and let them know your team is on it. By default, this list shows you new and your open tickets. You can use filters to access specific lists, like your urgent and high priority tickets, and even save these lists for easy access in the future. This, along with the to-do lists on the mobile app, helps you stay productive by focusing just on what needs your attention. Now let's look at an incident. We'll open this one about the internet site. You can start a Google Hangout video call with a single click. Fresh Service also integrates with remote access tools like BombGar, TeamViewer, and LogMeIn Rescue to save you the time spent switching over to those tools or walking back and forth. Let's say you want to check with SharePoint Admin to see what happened. You can use Discuss to ask them for help As the site was down because the SharePoint server had crashed, we'll attach the server to the incident. 
This, in turn, adds the incident to the server's CMDB entry. So the asset manager gets an idea of the server's overall health. Let's say the issue with the internet was fixed when the server was rebooted. Remember, the primary goal of incident management is to get the service up and running as soon as possible. Since the internet site is back up, you can mark the incident as resolved. This sends an auto-generated CSAT survey to the user and their response gets added to the ticket. But your job as an IT agent doesn't end there. If you notice this has been a regular occurrence, there's almost definitely an underlying problem that's causing it. And unless that is resolved, these tickets will keep on coming. So we'll create a problem and mark it as high priority, high impact, since it's been affecting multiple teams for a while. Now, the problem management team will pick it up and conduct root cause analysis. The main goal of problem management is to prevent problems and resulting incidents. They also need to mitigate the impact of unavoidable incidents. The problem manager starts by attaching all the related incidents to the problem. This makes it easy to review and understand the impact and the exact symptoms of the problem. All this information will be useful when determining its root cause. Let's say, in this case, the crashes were caused by conflicting applications. Now, the problem manager needs to suggest a workaround to help resolve future incidents quickly. Once a workaround has been added, the problem can be marked as a known error. The workaround is then sent to all agents working on connected incidents through automation. It's also added to the knowledge base, just in case this happens again. They all need to suggest a permanent solution to nip this in the bud. In this case, the solution is to install a new service pack. To make sure this gets done in a controlled manner, the problem manager raises a change request and sends it over to the change management team. The change management team now needs to plan the entire process of installing the service pack with minimum disruption to other services. The attached problem tells the change coordinator the exact reason for the change. The server that was linked to the incidents and the problem is now also linked to the change. It gives the change coordinator all the information they need to plan the change. Here, in the CMDB, they can also see a relationship map of dependent CIs that might be impacted during the installation. Before they start planning the change, they add the potential impact of the change. Based on all the information available, they need to come up with a complete plan to install the service pack on the SharePoint server. It should contain specific details, like the date and time when the update starts, the time needed for it, instructions to back up the data on the server before the update, and test it for recovery, including responsibilities for each of the steps. It will also include running performance tests after the service pack is installed. The change coordinator can attach documents like the warranty or support documentation that might be helpful during deployment. The team also needs a backout plan in place, just in case things don't go as smoothly as planned. The plan will include steps like restoring the server to its last known good configuration, running another performance test, and restoring the backup if required. Standard changes like RAM upgrades are pre-authorized. But since this is a major change, an approval request is sent to the Change Advisory Board, or CAB. This is a panel of experts from various fields, headed by the change manager. They discuss the plan and take a call on whether or not to approve it. Some of these experts will also be a part of the emergency cab to make decisions on high-impact emergency changes. Once they give a go-ahead, the new release is created for the change to be finally implemented. The change manager then sends it over to release management. After it's deployed, they can analyze the implementation and add a review here. The release management team is responsible for the deployment of non-standard changes. They'll plan and control the actual installation of the service pack. Since several other CIs depend on the server, the update is scheduled for the weekend. With the exception of emergency changes, any release that can potentially affect service operations should be carried out during non-business hours. The team lays out a build plan to compile the prerequisites for the service pack. The update is then tested on a staging server. Once it is done successfully, the team verifies whether it's resolved the associated problem. They also make sure that no new issues were caused after the installation. If everything goes as per plan, the production server is finally updated. After the service pack is installed, the team can mark the release as completed. Then, they document the release start and end date to review it with respect to the original plan. Ideally, once the release is closed, the associated changes 
problems, and incidents should be closed as well. Fresh Service comes with default automation rules to do all this automatically, but they can be customized or even disabled. For instance, if a change involves upgrading or replacing a CI, the workaround that was added to the problem may no longer be relevant. The problem manager can disable this rule and close problems manually to stay on top of such cases. Moving on, the Fresh Service Asset Management module lets you track and manage asset inventory, software licenses, and contracts. And as we saw earlier, it's closely integrated with all other ITIL processes. There are various ways to add asset details to the CMDB. The Asset Manager can import the list of assets from a simple CSV file. Your organization may already have a backup of all the assets in a spreadsheet. This list can even be exported from the app you might be using for the asset management previously. The other method is to track assets using the Discovery Probe. The Probe is a Windows application that can be installed on a machine and then used to track all the machines in the network. It fetches details about their operating system versions, software applications, and hardware components and populates them into the CMDB. Discovery Probe lets you deploy an application called Discovery Agent on these individual machines. What the agent does is let you bypass firewalls and other obstructions for more consistent tracking. It also sends out real-time updates to the CMDB if it detects a change in the host machine. In addition to all this, the Fresh Service mobile app comes with a barcode and QR code scanner to help you track and update assets on the go. The asset managers can also track contracts associated with the assets. When a contract or a software license approaches its expiration date, a reminder is sent to the asset manager and other stakeholders. Most IT projects involve intense planning and organizing. And if the teams involved work in silos, information transfer becomes all the more difficult. So the Fresh Service Project Management module helps bring IT service management and IT project management closer together. The installation of the service pack, for instance, can be added as a project. You can add stakeholders as members so they can stay up to speed with the progress at all times. The project can be further divided into tasks and subtasks, each with a designated owner. Some of the tasks may be dependent on certain other tasks. For instance, you cannot install the update before gathering all the prerequisites and backing up server data. You can define these dependencies in Fresh Service to ensure smooth execution of the project. You can add the incidents that trigger the update, the change that contains the complete installation plan, and the assets involved. When the service pack is successfully installed, you can mark the project as completed. Knowledge management is fairly straightforward in Fresh Service, but like we saw, it plays a vital role in driving self-service adoption among end users and can also be used by the IT team for internal knowledge sharing. Let's look at this folder that keeps track of all the known errors. While adding an article to the knowledge base, you can use rich text and bullet lists to make it easy to follow. If the concept is too complex to explain with text, you can even add screenshots, GIFs, or embed videos. Now, these articles need to be restricted to IT agents only. To do that, Go to the folder setting and set the visibility to just agents. Besides helping you optimize service management, Fresh Service provides reports for tracking and improving your team's performance. Here in the analytics section, you'll find default reports that cover all aspects of your service desk. In addition to these, you can create your own custom reports to track specific metrics. You can even project the reports onto a TV screen to keep your team driven. The admin console is where you can manage the entire service desk. You can configure your help desk settings, access tools for productivity, manage your assets, contracts, vendors, users, and agents, all from the admin console. We'll dive deeper into some of these options, but that's another video for another day. So that concludes the Fresh Service demo. If you found it helpful, for more video tutorials, go to youtube.com slash freshservice and subscribe.